Welcome to a special edition of Dr. James Beckett Sports Card Insights. As you've gathered from the title, this is an episode that's, uh, I can't call it a tribute because she's very alive, uh, my awesome wife, Diane. But today's her birthday, and as a, I'm a smart guy, I'm not going to tell you what her age is. Uh, she is in her prime, let's just put it that way. So she is awesome, and I'm very blessed to be her husband. She's been actually involved in this podcast. This is Sports Card Insights, so I try to give you some uh, sports card connection for the things. I could. I probably could spend 15 minutes just telling you how great my wife is, but actually, I don't even think she would like that because she's not narcissistic. She's uh, beautiful, but she doesn't like people laying it on too thick, so I'll just leave it at that. When I thought about doing a podcast, she was uh, very encouraging. She was not thinking, well, hey, how's that going to work? She had confidence in me, and uh, I'm glad. She knew that I had been listening to podcasts for a long time, for, for many years. I've listened to lots of podcasts. She doesn't like the fact that I listen at double speed uh, many times, but she knows that I'm I'm uh, getting uh, generally really good content that's, uh, that's uh, given me uh, insights about different things, uh, sports cards, but... Uh, again, a lot of it's just all kinds of different things. I, it's, it's an amazing reading list. If I have a choice to either read something or watch something or listen to something, I choose the listening, which is the podcast format. And, and to do it at one and a half times or double speed, uh, I can get a lot of content in and I can be doing something else uh, at the same time. One of the helpful suggestions Diane gave me is in, in preparation for doing this podcast, and she had been through a, a similar situation where she had a uh, leadership position that was going to require more public speaking. She really encouraged me to um, prove my speaking. I've been a professor, so I, I don't have any trouble talking and putting together a sentence, but I'm not perfect. I have room for improvement and practicing some better speaking techniques, which I observed her doing and getting the benefit of, even though she was already uh, very good before she started. And so I followed in her tracks, and it was uh, uh, certainly a benefit to me. So in some sense, she was my speaking coach and was very kind and gentle in her suggestions for my improvement that were spot on. She also recognized the importance very early on uh, in the beginning of the podcast, even before and during, that guests are perhaps more important than what I thought. And when she heard some of those first episodes with Rich, she said, you know, and she had known Rich because Rich comes over every once in a while and, and, and they don't have a lot of interaction, but she knows Rich is a really good guy. And, and so she could see we had some chemistry from having known each other for, wow, I mean, I think 40 years, but Rich thinks it's only 35. But I've known Rich for a long, long time. And uh, she could see the chemistry and the fact that we enjoyed talking and whether a microphone was there was not not a big deal. She also was the person that encouraged me and emphasized the power of story. I am a professor at heart. I like to educate. I like to give you the three points. But I don't know that she reminded me explicitly of this. But as I reflect, I realize I did not woo her with data. <laughs> I wooed her with story. I'm not sure I was a poet, but I was uh, when, when, uh, when you're... Um, Dating somebody and courting somebody, it's its not about the numbers, guys. So, uh, and gals already know that. So the power of story, and she's encouraged me in that way. And again, thats uh, that was uh, wise and excellent advice. I had uh, some of you know, I mean, a few of you know, because I've invited a few. I've had a uh, an annual hobby uh, barbecue here in my, uh, I've got a kind of a back house um, behind, uh, behind our house where I can have a uh, a dinner. So I've had some hobby dinners for people primarily in the area, although there have been some other people. And, and that's going to be an outstanding opportunity to record some episodes when, uh, when, when everybody's there. And I think you'll really enjoy that. But those hobby dinners wouldn't happen if Diane didn't say, hey, that's, uh, I like the idea of you having some men's dinners uh, back in the back. And, and uh, you know, I cook a little bit. So Again, she has, it's kind of amazing that she, we, we go out to eat, you know, a few nights a week and, and she'll cook three or four nights a week and I'll probably cook once a week. Well, somehow her friends think that I'm the hero when I cook once a week, 
when she's the hero because she's cooking almost all the time. And like I said, occasionally we go out, but uh, it's it's uh, she knows I enjoy good food and I enjoy uh, cooking and entertaining in a in a in a very casual way. And so she's encouraged me to uh, express that, and she's right there with me vicariously anyway. She doesn't come back to the men only dinners, but she's making sure that I'm uh, doing things right. The other thing that happened when I started, because I wasn't sure exactly, I mean, you know, it's a, when you think about doing a podcast and before it even happened, I had a chance to figure out, am I going to uh, do like these other uh, podcasts do? Most are a weekly podcast where they have uh, a series of guests or uh, d- deal in great detail with a, with a topic. And I, I, I wasn't thinking that's what I wanted to do, but she had clarity and said, you know, most people's commute is, is 15 or 20 minutes. If you keep it in that time frame, people are going to be able to listen when they're in the car and get the whole episode. Isn't that what you do? And I said, well, actually, yes, that is what I do. So it takes a little bit of discipline to keep these episodes to 15 minutes. And I hope you appreciate that. I mean, I guess what I'm banking on is that when an episode is so outstanding that you're wanting a lot more on that topic, you'll let me know and we'll do a part two. Another thing that came up where Diane said, you seem to be enjoying this, but again, when you taught as a professor, you walked into the classroom without fanfare and I guess picked up the chalk and went to the chalkboard or whatever. But in a podcast, in a digital medium, you need some music. And I said, well, I don't think I need music. This isn't about music. It's about sports. She said, well, most of the podcasts I listen to have music. And of course, me being a smart aleck, I said, well, actually, I have several podcasts I listen to that aren't, aren't, uh, aren't, don't have music at all. And then she asked me some probing questions, which then I figured out that actually the ones that don't have music are the nerdiest. And I thought, well, I don't want to be completely nerdy. Card collecting is mainstream. So I probably need some music. So I started looking for music and there's a lot of music that you can get that's, that's essentially free. But guess who came up with our theme song? She didn't do the music, but she found the music of the man in the house of cards, which is no reference to Kevin Spacey whatsoever, uh, or the TV show. It's, it's, it's from a, uh, it's a completely different thing, but she found the music and, uh, nailed it on the first time. Cause I thought, well, she said, I've got some music for it. Oh, gee. And then I listened to it. I thought, well, you know, it's, that's, uh, that's not bad. So our music, she is to thank for that. She will eventually be my social media coordinator. You know, I'm not eager to jump full, full, uh, jump completely in the pool for social media, but, uh, Diane and I are discussing how we could uh, do that in a way that'd be orderly and enjoyable. She's already on Facebook. Uh, it's a good way to, for her to keep track of her, uh, distant friends and vice versa. And so I've seen that she's really enjoyed it. But it's at this point, it's not for me, but perhaps there'll be a way to do that. And um, again, it's, it's just awesome to have a wife that's a teammate where we can discuss uh, working that out. Uh, I go on vacations with my awesome wife. And when I do, what happens to the podcast? Well, I can, I, since I'm recording at home and I'm doing the post-production and all that, and so I don't have to rely on anybody else other than these awesome guests that I have, uh, I've got a setup here that's that's pretty uncomplicated. And so she knows that I can record the podcasts uh, a couple days ahead or whatever and uh, and have them released on time uh, by the app. And that gives me a chance to uh, enjoy uh, a getaway with 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 my wife. So again, my podcast studio, such as it is, is, does not have optimal acoustics, but it it sure is convenient. And uh, I appreciate that. And Diane appreciates that, too. one more thing that she did that I have to thank for her on her birthday. I should thank her every day, but on her birthday, when I started doing phone interviews, I had to test out the software. Well, who was my software tester? I, I did a phone interview of my wife <laughs> and so tried to see how the audio quality would be. And frankly, I don't like the audio quality that well. I mean, I've got a, an app that's supposed to work, but it's just so easy to talk to somebody across a table. And so, and in Dallas, there's so many people, they're in town or coming through town, or if I, I may start going to some more shows. So I'll have an opportunity to do 
uh, in-person interviews, but I've got to do some of these uh, phone interviews. And so Diane helped me with that as well. We got to, uh, got to a point I thought, gee, I don't want to call this person and, uh, and then not know if it's going to work. And so I tested it out with her and she was, uh, you know, very, very gracious to give me feedback on, uh, what kind of microphone and uh, what the setup would be. So, uh, not sure what else to say about how awesome my wife is. Again, today is her exact birthday, which for those of you who have, who have uh, wonderful wives as well, you may not have a wife that has that is wonderful and also has a, an easily memorable birthday being 10-4. So, guys, I'm never going to mess that up. I mean, I wouldn't anyway, but being a numbers guy, that really makes it easy. Well, let, let's just leave it at that. This is a, this is a tribute to, or a pre-tribute to my wife, and I want to thank our sponsors: uh, the Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, ComC, that's UMC.com, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike's Stadium Sports Cards, Panini, Tops, and Upper Deck. So this was just an opportunity for me to say thank you and uh, and to my wife and tell her that uh, she's the love of my life and that uh, I want to honor her in this podcast and in every way. So, and I hope we're doing this every year at October 4th, if sweetheart, you will let me. So again, thanks listeners. Be back tomorrow.